another lesson from the contemplative forest. Crockett Park outside Nashville in Brentwood, Tennessee. This place has seen my worst and my best. I first started walking here to deal with an unrequited love. And there's no better place to heal than the forest. And today, on such a beautiful spring day, I'm gonna talk about how to fall in love with yourself. And you know, you know me, at first it sounds narcissistic and it sounds uh, self-absorbed, but those are just words and admonitions from the masters of mediocrity. You don't have to buy what they, what they tell you, they're wrong. And narcissism is really a self-esteem disorder. Narcissists don't love themselves. In fact, they dislike themselves. They have no worthiness and they overcompensate to make themselves believe in others that they're worthy. So I'm not talking about narcissism. I'm talking about truly falling in love with yourself. Why? Because if you don't love yourself, how can you accept someone who loves you? You'll question it and you'll sabotage it and you'll create all kinds of problems because you're not believing what they're seeing in you. So this is one of the main reasons. So how to fall in love with yourself? Well, first you have to have self-caring. You have to cultivate self-caring, which means that you have to feel and act with uh, enough goodness to protect yourself, to allow yourself to heal, to allow yourself to have the beauties that the world has to offer. That's first, self-caring. And that's cultivated not intellectually, but by actually doing things. Second, there has to be a belongingness. You have to feel, not that you belong with anyone, but that you belong in the world. You belong, there's a belongingness, there's a place for you, and the over seven billion people in the world, pretty close to eight billion now, you're unique. So therefore, there's a place for you, a very special place for you. You also have to have a sense of abundance. It's a way of claiming what I talk about, the inherent abundance of health, wealth, and love. You have to practice it. And you have to claim it, and you have to allow it to be assimilated and be very aware of what I call the dampers of achievement and the dampers of advancement. It's like a break, like a killjoy when something's going well. Those are parameters learned by the within the pale limitations of a culture. But if you want to live longer and healthier than those within the pale, then you have to live beyond the pale. Then, as you cultivate self-caring, as you cultivate the inclusiveness, and as you cultivate claiming your inherent abundance of health, wealth, and love, then you are an abundant individual who then has something to offer to someone who sees those same things in you. Then you don't have to deny them, you don't have to fight them because that person is agreeing with you. You don't have to boast about it, you just have to live it. And as you live it, then you begin to notice that things start working out for you. Almost magically, but it's not magically, it's a perception that you're changing. And it's not the universe doing anything for you. The universe is too busy expanding to buy you a new car or a new relationship. It's you, you are that universe within you. And as you do that, then agency, which is something that I talk about very much, which is the awareness of how you contribute to things, good and bad, then there's no need for a universe to back you or anything else. Agency. And then, as you do that, then you can go into a relationship of belongingness without ownership. But as you do that, you've already accepted that you're worthy to care for, that you have much to offer, and that you have a place in this world. And that person comes into your world also with the same objectives, which is to enhance the worthiness of two individuals now, whoever that person may be. And if you choose to be alone, that's fine. Continue that relationship with yourself. So that's how you fall in love with yourself. Every day, practice it. We don't know how to love ourselves. We're taught to exceed, 
to excel. And when we do, we're also taught to be humble about it and not accept it or, or to deny it or minimize it. That's not humbleness. That's manipulativeness, making people think that you're humble. So if anybody notices any of these wonderful attributes that you have that you're cultivating, simply say thank you very much for noticing and begin to admire yourself. Admiration is very good for the immune system, as I've talked about it before. Recent research is showing that it's a powerful immune enhancer, but it also activates parts of the brain that have to do with self-building and self-constructing. So, we're not made for the survival of the species, we're made to find meaning in our lives and to love ourselves before we can love anybody else. So, begin to fall in love with yourself and let me know what you find. This is an ongoing discourse, but for now, I am going to get back to my walk and continue to love myself, admire myself, so that you can admire yourself too and love yourself. Forget narcissism, those are names. Those are pathological names that have nothing to do with what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your nature is excellence. That's your nature. And you've been taught to be mediocre so you can be controlled. All right? So now, enjoy and begin the love affair with yourself. From the contemplative forest, I'll talk to you soon again.